November 10th, 1775, Tun Tavern in Philadelphia, which is always a joke that, of course, the Marine Corps would be established in a bar. Right. Right? Yeah, that's (laughs) classic. (laughs) Welcome to Talk With History. I am your host, Scott, here with my wife and historian, Jen. Hello. On this podcast, we give you insights to our history-inspired world travels, YouTube channel journey, and examine history through deeper conversations with the curious, the explorers, and the history lovers out there. Jen, we're back. (laughs) As we record this, this is our first podcast after the Christmas break. We've taken a bit of a break over the holidays, which we try to do every year. Yes. Everyone should know Scott and I are the parents of three children who need the magic of Christmas. So, yeah. And and we're, we're doing this kind of third full-time job yes. while you're writing and I'm, I'm working, doing active duty Navy stuff and all, all the fun stuff. So um, while we've been on holiday break, I can tell you we have still kept ourselves busy. So as a bit of a teaser to some of our larger efforts that we'll talk about in the coming weeks and months, we just released a history t-shirt with a nod to Benjamin Franklin. So his join or die political cartoon is is famous even today. Picture the, the kind of snake kind of cut up with the different states labels just below it, each section. So it was published in May of 1754 and it was his call to the colonies to stay united. So we just released our new history or die t-shirt. So that's history or die, which is a nod to that call of unification. We wanna bring some creators together to help put out good history quality content. We have our History Die t-shirts live over on on the Walk With History gift shop right now, and they're already our most popular t-shirt that we've created. So you can feel free to check it out over at walkwithhistorygiftshop.com. That's walkwithhistorygiftshop.com. And speaking of those who already bought a shirt and donated towards our efforts today, we wanted to give a shout out to Nancy Arnold, Brett Eater, and Jennifer Thomas. (laughs) They had the amazing presence of mind to grab our new shirt first, but they also donated during checkout. We actually add that as an option because we don't really make money off the t-shirts. We might make a dollar or two because I try to keep the prices as low as I possibly can. So thank you so much, guys. Nancy is actually someone we met through our online community. Brett is an old family friend, and Jen Thomas is a fellow Navy pilot vet that flew with my Jen (laughs) way back in the day. So thank you all guys so much for for donating to our efforts. It really does help because none of the stuff that we are doing is necessarily free, and you guys are kind of helping us move along. So we really do appreciate the support. Yes, and if you think of the shirt, the political cartoon said, join or die, Originally, we replaced join with history, and it is really a foundational belief of what we do that to really live a full life and to understand where we're going in the future, you really have to understand the past. Yeah. And there's a whole lot of thoughts that I have around kind of that history or die phrase, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in the future. Today, we embark on a poignant journey through hallowed grounds that bear witness to the legacy of some of the United States Marine Corps' most revered heroes. We'll be taking you on a tour through the final resting places of legendary astronauts, iconic drill instructors, and symbols of courage and sacrifice immortalized at the Iwo Jima Memorial. As we walk the sacred grounds and stand before these hallowed graves, we'll delve into the stories etched in stone, stories that transcend time and continue to inspire generations. Together, let's pay homage to these extraordinary individuals who exemplify the Marine Corps values of honor, courage, and commitment. So, Jen, where were we that we're going to talk about during this Talk With History episode? Honestly, in my opinion, and, and yours too, babe, we were at the only place you probably should be on Veterans Day, and that was Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, D.C., uh, or in, in Arlington, Virginia. People will correct me. It's not actually in Washington, D.C. It's in Arlington, Virginia, right across the Potomac. But 
it was just important for us to go there. We brought the kids there and we wanted to honor some Marines buried in Arlington for Veterans Day. And it's so close to the Marine Corps birthday. It's the day after the Marine Corps birthday. Uh, the Marine Corps birthday is uh, November 10th. And so the Marines were actually buried at Arlington, were actually celebrated and they all had Marine Corps flags in front of their tombstones. Yeah. So we actually, we drove up, we, we live a couple hours away, drove up to Arlington on Veterans Day. We were there on the actual day. I think it was a Saturday. Yeah. And so we got up there and there was actually a little bit more people there than, than we were normally used to because we've been to Arlington a, a fair amount of times. And not only for Veterans Day, and we'll talk a little bit more about kind of the people we saw throughout Arlington while we were there, but also the the president was there. Sure. And we were not aware that President Biden was going to be there. So we were rerouted. Yep. And in that reroute, so we, and we'll talk about this, when we first get into Arlington, we have been there before many times, if you know us and know this channel, and we... The first grave we visited was Gunnery Sergeant Ermey, who's the actor, and his grave is in one of the newer locations, way off to the right-hand side, so you really have to go there first or last, and it's a long walk to get there. We don't have uh, car access, and so we went there first without even thinking so much about what was going on, and so coming back from his grave, we weren't allowed to walk by the tomb of the unknown because that's where the ceremony was happening so we actually ended up walking behind the tomb of the unknown about around the back side of arlington national cemetery and we came across the confederate circle something we had heard about and read about but never visited before and it it, i really could tell as we walked upon it that of what it was i was like oh this is the confederate circle and I I thought to myself, I should make a video. We knew nothing about what was happening with the monument on the slate to be removed the end of December 2023. We had no idea about that. Yeah. So and so to kind of set the stage there. So we had gone over and visited Gunny Ermey. Mm -hmm. And because President Biden was doing a presentation in the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, which is kind of in the center of Arlington. If you've ever been there, it's kind of at the top of this little hill, hilly area. We had gone or, gone to see Gunny Ermy, right? And if you if you're not familiar with his name, think of Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, and we're gonna um, give him more. Yeah, Private Pile. He's the voice of kind of the the Army soldiers in Toy Story. Yes. Famous actor. And going over, we went again. We kind of walked around the Tomb of the Unknown as we were visiting other Marines that we'll talk about. And you said, "Oh, cool! Look, here's the here's the Confederate Circle." And just kind of unexpectedly. So there was a naming commission. That's what it was. And Congress created them in 2020, providing suggestions, scrubbing Confederate names or other symbols from the U.S. military bases, property, things along that nature. And under the law, the Pentagon is required to implement those recommendations. And so this memorial of in the Confederate circle. So in the Confederate circle, just so you know, it's section 16. So it's a low number. So think of an original, one of the original sections. It's 400 Confederate soldiers buried in a circle. And this monument is kind of put up in the middle of them. And it was erected in 1914 and funded from the Daughters of the Confederacy. And it it promotes the lost cause narrative, or at least that's what the naming commission, that's what they found that through their research that it supported the lost cause narrative and they they believe it it's the that that romanticization of the confederacy fighting to uphold southern values while downplaying the horrors of slavery and they found that because the monument features a, a bronze woman crowned with olive leaves and she's supposed to represent the south so this, this strong woman. And then underneath her is 14 shields, one for each of the 14 Confederate states, plus Maryland, Kentucky, and Missouri, which were border states who didn't necessarily secede. So they're pulling in three more states who probably don't want to be pulled in. <laughs> and then below the shields are these 32 lifelike figures of gods, Confederate soldiers. And in those figures are two enslaved African-Americans and one portrays 
kind of like that mammy stereotype. Think of Gone with the Wind. And she's holding an infant child up to a white officer to kind of kiss the officer goodbye as he goes to war. And then and then the other is a enslaved man like following his owner into battle. So because of those two depictions of African Americans and not really having their agency, it it was found by this commission that it supported that lost cause narrative. And yeah, and and the interesting thing was again from kind of again me walking around not not really knowing much about it and at the time you didn't really either. It is not a monument that's like in your face. It's not in the center of anything. It's close to to Arlington House, which is the the center because you, like you said it's one of the older plots. Sure. But it's it's not like overly advertised. It's it's just kind of any other memorial that's around there. And it's kind of trees around it. Yeah, so you kind of have right. to walk to it. Yep. So the memorial they believed offered this nostalgic, mythalized version of the Confederacy. This is this is what the commission wrote in their report. Me- a mythologized vision of the Confederacy, including highly sanitized depictions of slavery. And then sometimes the commission will consider alternatives to removing and and they'll add some signage for context or something like that. But ultimately, they decided that contextualization was not an appropriate option in this case. So they said they will be removing only the bronze elements and the granite base will remain and they won't disturb any of the 400 graves. So if you see our video... It is on this bronze, this, this bronze statue is on a granite base and they're only taking the bronze statue. Now, what's interesting about this bronze statue is it was sculpted by a student from VMI and that student from VMI is buried in that Confederate circle from, and so he's buried at Arlington. He sculpted this, he went to VMI and VMI has asked for the statue. And, and, so and is that, that that's where they're taking? That's what they're taking it. Uh, I, the governor of Virginia had just came in and said, "If you're going to take down the statue, we would like to take it to to private land." And since the student at VMI sculpted it, VMI would like to have it. VMI is is going to put it in a, I think, in their cemetery there. But it's being taken away from the person who actually sculpted it, who's in Arlington. But so that's what's happening right now. We did not, we were not aware of that when we made the video. If you want to see the video on Instagram, it's just me showing you the statue. Yeah. And and the funny part was, is you again, kind of behind the scenes here a little bit, you were going through kind of some of these Instagram reel videos that you had made because we're pretty active on Instagram. And you said, ah, this video isn't really that good, you know, talking about it because you hadn't really told any story or drawn any point. You would literally just pointed out the the statue, yeah, here's and, the statue and here's some graves around here's and there's there's a general over there right mm-hmm. and that was it and you posted on instagram literally a day or two before they actually removed it so timing was just interesting for us and people had plenty to say sure on that post i i appreciate that you know i i do say this is section 16 one of the most unknown and controversial sections and i had people argue with me why is it controversial well if you look at the 200 other comments in there you would see why it's controversial but i do have a couple comments who said this is the most unbiased description i have seen of this monument cuz all she does is say here's the monument here are some people buried here. And that's it. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so so that was kind of an interesting aside. And again, that, that monument wasn't really the focus of our visit. No. You know, and we'll talk about some of the, the Marines that we visited here, but it was just something very interesting that that, that kind of came about shortly. Like it was literally a week or two after we were there. Yeah. And like I said, and we were kind of like we stumbled upon it because we had to be rerouted because President Biden was in Arlington. It we it was never something we were gonna make a video of. But it it we now have it. It is out there. It's been removed. If you want to see it in Arlington before it was removed, we have the video of it on Instagram. We visited Gunny Ermy first, and we've actually talked about him before on this podcast. So we don't have to spend too long on him, but I'll, I'll let you kind of start with him, and then we'll kind of venture off into some of our other Marines. So 
Gunny Ermy, he wasn't really a gunnery sergeant, but he plays a gunnery sergeant. So, and that's his most famous role. In and and he gunner. is known even in the Marine Corps as the gunny. The gunny. So when you hear me say that, sometimes people argue with me. Well, he wasn't a gunnery. Yes, he was not a gunnery sergeant. Yes, he was in the Marine Corps. Yes, he was a staff sergeant in the Marine Corps. But his he's famous for playing a gunnery sergeant. So he was born in March of 1944. He actually passed in April of 2018. He's buried in one of those far out sections, I think it's a section 82. And he, and he was a U.S. Marine drill instructor. And he came to fame for his role of, of the gunnery sergeant in Full Metal Jacket and earned him a Golden Globe and a nomination for Best Supporting Actor because he was hired to be kind of a consultant, right? consultant to the actor who was playing a gunnery sergeant. And the actor couldn't get the cadence fast enough, the insults, you know, the the, the digs. Because he had actually been a drill instructor, right? He had been a drill instructor. So, so for those guys, they did it for probably two, three years, maybe four, mm-hmm. right? So the, it's, it's second nature yes. to them, right? The insults just comes so naturally (laughs) and they'll pick on any little thing a movement a blink a smile a sniff right they're able to come right to you and just pick on that thing and they're so good at what they're going to say yeah i think the the clip that i put in from full metal jacket was gunny ermy you know going up to private pile and saying private pile do you expect me to believe you don't know from your left from your right and he says no sir he's so you just want to be special (laughs) you know and so he just goes right it's there's no pause there because that's what they do yes and you know i think anybody who's been through any kind of basic you know or drill camp you know it, it it's and you've made it through, you kind of have a special place in your heart for your drill instructor. So for him to play that part and so well, people really liked him in that part because he was so authentic in that part. Um, He plays a lot of other roles. He sometimes got typecast in that authoritative figure role. Mississippi Burning is uh, one I really liked him in. But he's also done some comedy which we really liked and my the kids we told him about toy story playing sergeant toy story we also like him and saving silverman saving silverman he's in geico commercials, he's in geico commercials. funny geico commercials. commercials but what i love most about him and what we want to honor is he was enlisted in the united states marine corps uh, from the, in 1961 at the age of 17 he went through boot camp in san diego which scott and i know well we used to work out at that base actually and um and he was in the Marine Corps, I think, until 1972. So he served 11 years in the Marine Corps. And so we really wanted to honor his service and what he did. He was always so proud of his military service. He loved being called the gunny. He did USO tours. He always took time to speak with people. Our post of him on Instagram brings out so many wonderful stories. He is beloved mm-hmm. by, and I even by think Marines. His daughter, right? I even yeah, think- his. So on our on our on our second Arlington video, actually our most famous, you know, our most viewed video, he's on he's on the thumbnail, right? It's it's him and and the other actor yeah. and his daughter. I think that's the top pin. I pinned the comment because his daughter commented on our video she's thank you so much for for doing this and we chatted back and forth a little bit so if you actually want to see his daughter's comments on our video you can go look that video up yes it's it's ermy and charles durning yeah and we're we're honoring basically the movie stars the actors the media influencers at arlington but again if you want to pay your respects to ermy if you visit arlington be prepared for a walk he is the you go in right to the right furthest section to the right but he's definitely worth a visit. Yeah, he's way out there, but it's definitely worth swinging out to section 82. I just want to hit on Lee Marvin okay, real fast. Sure. Lee Marvin is another actor who we have honored in another one of our videos, but he is also a Marine. And because we stopped at Pappy Boyington, who we'll talk about more, but Lee Marvin was so close we do talk about Lee Marvin pretty quickly. And his gravesite is like very close to the Tomb of the Unknown. Yes. Yeah. And rape right aside, Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis, yeah. So Lee Marvin was a Marine. He joins the Marine Corps in 1942. He's in the Battle of Saipan. He gets injured. He um, gets injured in the buttocks. <laughs> it, it severs his sciatic. But he's awarded the Purple Heart because of that. And he has a Navy Accommodation Medal. And then he's discharged from the military. But he's in the Pacific 
theater of World War II. And he is a very decorated Marine. And he was in 21 amphibious assaults on Japanese held islands. So I just wanted to honor him. He is a Marine. Let's not forget, right? Once a Marine, always a Marine. He was also proud of his military service. And, and people still comment about him. Yeah. And, yeah. Best known for his movie roles. And oh know. yeah. Dirty Dozen. And yeah. I always say the man who shot Liberty Valance. With Jimmy Stewart. Right. And John Wayne. Great. Yeah. Great. Great movie. Now you mentioned Pappy Boyington. Yes. So once you, for folks who might kind of be familiar with that name, because it, even to me, it sounded a little bit familiar. Who was he? Happy Boyington was a pilot and he, he was a Marine Corps pilot, which people probably would be like, oh, I thought he was Navy. No, he's Marine Corps. And he received the Medal of Honor and the Navy Cross. He joined the Flying Tigers and he was also part of the Black Sheep Squadron, which is BMF 214. Uh, he took command of them in August 14th, 1943. He in Jen, so he, I, so he, Imagine he's the commanding officer of the Black Sheep. About six months later, Boynton, outnumbered by Japanese Zero planes, was shot down in the Pacific o- Ocean after downing one of the planes. He's captured by a Japanese submarine, and he was held as a prisoner of war for more than a year and a half. And he was released shortly after the surrender of Japan. So this TV series, Baba Black Sheep, it ran for two seasons in the late 70s. It was inspired by him and his men of the Black Sheep Squadron. So it, it builds this whole idea of these marine pilots who live by their own rules and are a little, you know, unorthodox. But when it really comes down to it, are totally awesome yeah and and he makes some guest appearances in the show he does and he meets the character playing him yeah as an admiral yeah. or an older uh ranking officer because he's 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 aged of course so he's his character who plays him meets the real life him and we show a clip of that in the video yeah and and and, and funny thing was too when i pulled the When I found the clips for that, there's actually some other actors that that even, you know, our generation would would recognize in there. Um, So it was neat to see him kind of going back in there to kind of have this cameo, not as as himself because he was older, but. Again, seeing someone who was recognized for his service in, in the TV show kind of giving him that nod. Yes. And he's also somebody who got winged in Pensacola. And then he was a part of the second Marine aircraft group at San Diego Naval Air Station. So someone, again, who's in the same areas that we were when we were in the military. And then he took part in in different ca- aircraft carriers, the Lexington and the Yorktown. So just somebody, you know, people will recognize the name because he's a Medal of Honor winner, because he was a Flying Tiger, because he was the commanding officer of the Black Sheep Squadron, because he was a prisoner of war. And then there was a TV show made about his squadron. This, the man was just larger than life. Yeah. And, and if you're listening and, and you're a Marine and you want to go to Arlington, because we do get those comments all the time of, oh, I'm always, I've always planned on going to Arlington. Thank you for making these videos. So if you're listening, again, I'll recommend when you go or before you go, download the Arlington National Cemetery app. It is incredibly useful. It is like the tool if you're going to do a lot of your own kind of walking around and you're not going to use the tram. So download that at ANC Alpha November Charlie Arlington National Cemetery app and you can plug in the person's name and it'll give you kind of the section, the grave number, and it'll actually kind of give you a, a GPS map to where that where that is. So if you ever want to go visit some of these people, that's a great way and a great tool for those of you who are kind of smartphone savvy to, yes. to go walk around Arlington. We've used it every time. Yep. It saved us. I do want to say one more thing about Boyington. He has a record of shooting down 28 aircraft. So he beat World War One ace Eddie Rickenbacker's record of 26 with 28. And that was the same day that he was shot down. Yeah, that's... That's wild. I mean, I think you even said on the video, he's like a, a five times ace. Yeah, five yeah. times ace. Because yeah. an ace, I, I remind people, is when you have shot down five planes. Yeah. So five times ace is, yeah. He's now, no, not, well, it was a de- decent ways away. We went over and visited, I think it was Ira Hayes next yes. after that. We did Ira Hayes next. Ira 
Hayes is somebody we've really just learned a lot more about. Very, very interesting because if you listen to, I think it was our last podcast, we interviewed an, an author who wrote a whole biography. It's the third biography on Ira Hayes. Go back and listen to that. It's very, very interesting because this author is, is you know, was Native American, like Ira Hayes was. And so kind of looked at Ira Hayes through a little bit of a different lens than some of the past biographies. So we, I encourage you to go back to listen to that if you're interested in learning more about Ira Hayes. But what did we learn and what did we talk about in the video? Ira Hayes, first of all, first and foremost, I want everyone to know that he is the sixth man on the raising of the flag of Iwo Jima. So that iconic photograph that was used to make the monument, the Marine Corps monument and memorial, the sixth man in the back pushing up the flagpole is Ira Hayes. And his grave is off the beaten path and very unassuming. And I don't even think it's part of the tram tour. So I just want him to have a little bit more of a presence, I feel, in Arlington because what he's what he did and what he's remembered for and we'll talk about the memorial at the end because we took the kids there it's such an impressive memorial and he is on it it's just something that i think needs to be kind of uh celebrated a little bit more but ira hayes ira hamilton hayes was born in january of 1923 he passes away in january of 1955 and like you said he was an american indian from arizona and he's a Marine in World War II. He, he's generally known as one of the six men of the raising of the flag at Iwo Jima, the famous photograph by Joe Rosenthal. And remember, this flag was raised over Mount Suribachi on February 23rd, 1945. And I think I kind of explain it in the video where there was two flag raisings. Remember, the first one was smaller. And when the commanding officer comes on board to... Iwo Jima Island he sees it and he wants it and so they get a bigger ensign and they put up a second one and he's part of that second photograph that second raising although they do believe he was a part of both of them and I remind people as well there's no flag pole on the ship it's not like they let's bring extra flag poles with us so this is a pipe like a regular pipe that is probably like 10 times the weight, 20 times the weight. So when you're thinking like, why does it take six men to raise this? Because this, this is a big, long, heavy, heavy pipe. pipe. Yeah. yeah. So that's why it's taking six men to raise it up. And he, he comes home after the raising of Iwo Jima. He participates in a, like a, a tour to raise funds, war bonds and he's instrumental in helping to identify the other men in the photograph. And he, he really is a part of that lone drive fundraising as well in 1946. And he, I mean, he actually becomes pretty famous. He does. He, there's a song written about him, of course, by Johnny, um, Cash. Johnny Cash. But he, he's in the movie Stands of Iwo Jima with John Wayne. And John Wayne hands him the ensign with two other actors to put the flag up. We, have, we show that clip in the video. Yep. He's the subject of another movie called The Outsider with Tony Curtis, who plays Ira Hayes. We talk about this in our other podcast. Tony Curtis is not an American Indian, so the type of makeup, and we could call it red face, but this is another conversation for film and Hollywood and things like that. But he's inspired many books. He, The Flag of Our Fathers by Clint Eastwood is a movie. He's in that movie. There's a, a book based on that as well. And he was actually at the dedication of the memorial. So when they dedicate the memorial in Arlington on November 10th, 1954, he's standing there with the president dedicating the memorial. He will pass away that January, so two months later. And... We talk about this more if you want to listen to the other podcast about his his life and specifically post-traumatic stress and specifically how he medicates, self-medicates himself with alcohol and ultimately he dies of exposure after a night of drinking. And so we really want to clear, the author wanted to clear up just the misconceptions about his life and how he's kind of written off as an alcoholic or written off as a drunk Indian and just make sure he gets the credit he deserves. Yeah, the, the author, Tom Holm, who we interviewed, again, writing this 
biography. They sent us the biography ahead of time. We got a chance to kind of look through it briefly and then talk to the author. Does a very good job about kind of talking about Ira Hayes and kind of who he really was and who his people really were. So highly encourage you to go back and check that out. So who did we visit after that? So I, I'm pretty sure we went to section 60 after that. Yep. I think so. And it was very special. A, we're going to honor a woman, Maureen. Section 60, as I remind people, is one of the largest sections in Arlington. It's actually one of the most active sections in Arlington. Still has active burials today, but it's because it's a younger generation. And so Megan McClung is the first female United States Marine Corps officer killed in combat during Iraq. And she was serving as a public affairs officer when she was killed. She's also the first graduate, female graduate of the Naval Academy to be killed in combat. So she was born in 1972. She's killed December 6, 2006. And what was very interesting about visiting Major Megan McClung's grave is right in front of her grave was another woman visiting her son. And I got to have a conversation with her. She visits her son every Veterans Day, his birthday. She sits out there with him. He was only in the military for six months when he was killed. He enlisted right out of high school. Is he Army, Marine? I, I can't remember. I think it was Army. I think it was Army because yeah. we were having a discussion about the Army-Navy game. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, she was. She kept saying beat Navy. Yes. But I want to remind people, if you go to Arlington and you do encounter a family, it is okay to ask, talk about their lives because they do want to honor their loved ones and talk about their lives and not be forgotten. Yeah. I I will say when we were there this time, I saw more families and I saw the range, right? I was very, I appreciated the, the lady that you were talking to because she was very open. She was very, she was more than willing to chat. She was there just kind of enjoying, it was actually a pretty nice, a decent day. But there were other spots, and se- we, I think I saw more in Section 60 than in any, which kind of makes sense. There were some families that were standing next to grave sites that were relatively emotional. And so I, we had to talk to the kids and say, hey, guys, let's, let's, let's keep it down because this is why families are here, is they're here to remember their loved ones. Yes, I, wouldn't, I would not approach somebody who was in the midst of having their moment with their person, but someone who's going to put a chair and sit for a little while and you happen to be walking by, I think it's, it's more than, I think it's respectful if you want to ask about. And and it was neat too, as we were walking around and I think it was more in section 60 than some of the others is we saw the Marine Corps flags. Yes. So there were so many. And that's when I realized, oh, they must have put all these flags for the Marines because the day before was the anniversary of the Marine Corps' birthday. Yeah. So think of the little red Marine flag Mm -hmm. with the the yellow gold, Eagle Eagle Globe Globe and Anchor. Anchor. November 10th, 1775, Tun Tavern in Philadelphia, which is always a joke that, of course, the Marine Corps would be established in a bar. Right. Right. (laughs) Yeah, that's classic. (laughs) And that's what I loved about Major McClung's grave is it it had her motto on there, which was like, be brief, be gone, be strong, be brief, be gone or something like that. Be brief, be bold, be gone. Yes. And I said, there's nothing that reminds me more what a Marine would say than be gone. And. Scott and I have served with a lot of Marines. So Scott and I met on the USS Tarawa, which is a Marine Corps platform ship. It's a Marine Corps transport ship. And so the Tarawa is named after the Battle of the Tarawa in the Pacific, which is a Marine Corps battle. And so on that ship, there'd be about a thousand Navy and 2000 Marines. And that's how they, we transport them. And it's a flat deck amphibious boat. So we've spent our time with a lot of, of Marines. Yeah, we still have good friends that are Marines. We have very good friends. And be gone is probably something I would never second guess a Marine saying to me. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it was it was it was quite the visit and, and I really did did enjoy it. So what was so interesting is as Scott and I are driving to Arlington and I'm looking up, hey, you know, let's pick some really popular Marines to to honor at Arlington and John Glenn pops up and I'm like, John Glenn was a Marine? And Scott was like, he was? And I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. John Glenn, astronaut John Glenn, 
was an American Marine Corps aviator. And actually, he was most proud of that than being an astronaut. I was I was so surprised because and you kind of you kind of boast about it all the time, right? A lot of astronauts are Navy pilots. Yes. Right. A lot of them are. So I just assumed I had assumed for forever that he had been a, a Navy pilot. And learning that he he was a Marine was really neat. Yeah. So John Herschel Glenn, born in July of 1921, he passed December 8th, day before my birthday in 2016, was an American Marine Corps aviator, astronaut, businessman and politician. He was the third American in space and the first American to orbit the Earth, circling it three times in 1962. Now, he was a distinguished fighter pilot in World War II. And he shot down three MiGs and was awarded six Distinguished Flying Crosses and 18 Air Medals. He was also a test pilot. And that is what made him look good for the Mercury 7 program and become one of NASA's first astronauts. That's kind of the path for yes. pilots. That's typically like they if, if they go to be a test pilot, then they kind of have that, that check in the box yes. for potential astronauts. Yes. So that's on February 20th, 1962 is when he flew the Friendship 7 mission, becoming the first American to orbit the Earth. And if you see in the movie Hidden Figures, he's he's played by the character who wants to make sure the numbers are checking out right. And so what I appreciate about that is, yes, we've talked about a lot of astronauts will be Navy or Marine Corps pilots because you're landing on a carrier. And because you're landing on a carrier, you're so precise and dialed in. And that's what they want you to be if you're flying the space shuttle. And as a test pilot... You're flying so many different air platforms. You're learning all these different nuances about size and wingspan and power. And you're able to adapt quickly and understand what's happening with your aircraft that they want that kind of pilot again in the space shuttle in case there's a problem. Even when you think of the Friendship 7 and it orbits three times, I think it was supposed to orbit more than that. But because they were having some issues with heat, they had brought him in early. Oh, I didn't know that. And so you have to be kind of quickly adaptable. And that's kind of Marine Corps really like prides themselves on that. What is it? Semper Gumby, always being flexible, right? right. And adaptable. So I think it's very fitting that John Glenn, Marine John Glenn, was the first person to orbit the earth. Yeah, that that one was kind of one of the neater ones for me on this particular trip because I absolutely knew who that was. Mm -hmm. And I was just absolutely surprised to, to learn that he was a Marine. But so it was pretty neat. Well, we made sure the kids took a picture with his grave and he's very close to the Tomb of the Unknown. Like I could see Audie Murphy's grave from him. I can see the Tomb of the Unknown from him. So if you're visiting the Tomb of the Unknown and John Glenn is right there. After we visited John Glenn, finally the President Biden had left. <laughs> so his whole entourage has left. So we were able to actually, we actually took some really cool pictures yeah. up by the Tomb of the, yeah. Tomb of the Unknown. Not right in there, but just kind of around it. So that got done. So we were able to kind of get over, like you said, to Audie Murphy's grave and kind of visit him real, real quickly and stuff like that. But then one of the things that we wanted to do, because I had never been there, was get to the Iwo Jima Memorial. And boy, was it impressive. I, I was so... I don't know what to, I had seen plenty of pictures and I, I didn't really have any expectations and you had run the Marine Corps Marathon twice. So yes. you'd, you'd been there, mm -hmm. but I, we got there and you park kind of a, around it and then you kind of walk up and there's this whole field from where the parking is and you can see the Iwo Jima Memorial and I was flabbergasted. It's huge. It's huge and it's, it's beautiful. massive. I mean, you, the, Go watch our video because I, I I try to get some really wide shots, basically from the parking lot area, and you see how small the people are walking up to it. I was I was so impressed, and the the sky was blue and beautiful, and the wind was blowing, so the flag was <laughs> it was just so picturesque. I was like you know as a videographer, amateur videographer, I was just in heaven, you know, out there, and we got kind of like a really great picture of you and I in front of the memorial. It was so impressive. So we use that picture for the Walk With History Christmas card. It is a 360 monument and it is beautiful on that highest peak. And that's why when you run the Marine Corps Marathon, it's that last point two of your 26.2 miles is up the hill to the Iwo Jima Memorial because it is so motivational then at the end. Like I said, it was dedicated in 1954 and it says on it, 
to all Marines who have given their lives in defense of the U.S. since 1775. And I even think it says to all the men of the Marine Corps, which I talk about because I appreciate that it says that and they haven't changed it because in the military, as a woman, they're not going to update all the regs and all the stuff. You just assume when they say servicemen or it's you, you're part of that. I never, I never batted an eye. I would have so many people call me sir by mistake. And I never, I just don't sweat it. It's not a big deal because you just get used, so used to saying it. And so I just always encompass myself when it says men, I'm a part of that. It's inspired by that iconic photograph of the six Marines. Like I said, Iowa Hayes is the last one in the back. So I wanted to make sure that people understand it's one of the only few places that is designated to fly the American flag 24 hours a day. And it's required. It's officially required. And JFK wrote that into law in June of 1961. And that's why it'll always be lit as well. So, Oh, is that? Okay. Mm-hmm. So if you see it at night, it's always going to have the light on the flag. And the flag will always be flying over it. So yeah. I think that's so cool. It was so cool. And it has all the names of kind of all the the wars and the, the kind of the famous you know, battles that they've been in, like engraved all around the monument. And it's, it really is kind of hard to put into words. It's, it's not the same seeing it in a video, seeing it in a picture as being there. Yes. It's not, it's not the same. Being there in person is a completely different experience. Absolutely. It was a great way to end Veterans Day. It was a great way to end honoring Marines at Arlington, It was really good for our kids to see it. And I definitely recommend if you are going to take the time to go to Arlington National Cemetery, take the extra 10 minutes to drive up the hill to the Iwo Jima Memorial. Yeah. And it only takes 10 minutes because you're driving around D.C. And driving around D.C. is is awful. (laughs) I'm sorry. Jen knows. And if you've listened to this podcast and I talk about driving around D.C., I I hate driving around there. It's, It's brutal. But absolutely worth it. If you're out there, make the trip. Thank you for joining us on our journey of remembrance today, where we explored the courage, sacrifice, and indomitable spirit of the Marines who left their mark on history. Whether it was flying high above the earth or bravery resulting in one of World War II's most iconic flag-raising photographs, these heroes will never be forgotten for their service. And again, Thank you for listening to the Talk With History podcast. And please reach out to us at our website, talkwithhistory.com. But more importantly, if you know someone else that might enjoy this podcast, please share it with them. Especially if you think today's topic would interest a friend. All you Marines out there, all you military out there, text this episode to your Marine buddies and tell them to look us up. We rely on you, our community, to grow, and we appreciate you all every day. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you.